Today, we're asking and answering the question, does yeast rehydration matter? Let's find out. All right, for this test, I, I've done this before. I did it about two years ago. I don't feel like I did it the true justice. So that we're testing whether yeast rehydration makes a difference in your brewing. This is assuming you're using dried yeast. Um, so, of course, if you use liquid yeast, that's a whole different thing. But dried yeast, we know on the packet, we see on the packets, rehydrate at 105, whatever, all the time and all those things, to uh, hopefully wake up the yeast. So a lot of people will just dry pitch, meaning you just literally, I've done it before a lot, you just put the yeast right on top. Rehydrating is just putting water in. Here's how this test works. We are going to take these three meads right here. I mix together uh, the following recipe, nine pounds of honey, 2.3-ish, basically, uh, gallons of water. And then uh, I am a different yeast protocol, essentially, together. In front of me right now, I have each different version. I, this version right here is gonna be a sprinkled, I'm just gonna pitch the yeast right on top, this right here is gonna be a rehydrated with water only. So just water, just yeast. This is gonna be that. And this one here is gonna be rehydrated with water and go firm, which is something that we know helps yeast in general uh, ferment. And I, in a moment, I'm gonna put all of these into them appropriately. The starting gravity for this is 1.092. So that's, that's the same all the way through, same batch of must, all of that. So a fun fact about this, each one of these has 1.5 grams of uh, Lauvin 71B1122, which is a great yeast, uh, in it. And the Go Firm, I, I am following a Tosna 3.0 protocol, so I used the proper amount of water and 1.3 grams of Go Firm based off of what this Tosna schedule said all this nerdy stuff to tell you. I'm gonna tell you at the end of this with charts and data and all of this stuff, the gravity readings, um, how things changed. And at the end, we're gonna do a taste test to see if there's a difference between sprinkling and rehydrating and rehydrating with GoFirm. Basically, I've done tests like this before and I science the crap out of this stuff. So you're gonna enjoy this video, I promise. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and throw my yeast and stuff in. It's been sitting for 15 minutes. We've rehydrated for 15 minutes in total. So let me go ahead and pour each one in. Okay, I've topped them off with the appropriate amount. Each one should be at the same level. I've got my airlocks. Okay, we're ready to ferment. I will take a gravity reading every two days. I'll be back if there's an update about them or I'll just come back after the primary and give you all the information. So I'll be back soon. All right, it has been roughly about 36-ish days since we started these. Now, I didn't document the beginning of the process, but the Go Firm, rehydrated Go Firm, took off a little bit faster than the just straight up rehydrated and sprinkled. I did take gravity readings every two days. Um, so I have all the gravity readings and I'll show those in just a moment. I wanna to talk to you about how quickly each one fermented. We'll do a taste test towards the end of this video. So you can find it there. Um, unsurprisingly, the rehydrated with the Go Firm actually finished faster. So here are all the gravity readings you can see on the screen. So the rehydrated with Go Firm took 16 days to ferment and clearly just took off a little faster than the rest of them. Uh, I mean, that's, again, not a surprise. The yeast were given more nutrients, I think. So, yeah. Also, I will add, I did give these proper nutrients, and um, I think I might have said Tosna, but I ended up, honestly, just putting a teaspoon of Fermate O in uh, towards after 24 hours just to try and get them to go evenly. So, they had nutrients. The rehydrated finished in 16 days. The rehydrated, sorry, rehydrated with Go Firm finished in 15 days. Rehydrated no Go Firm finished in 20 days. And the sprinkled finished in 20 days. Here's something important. The sprinkled and no Go Firm 
rehydrated version, pretty much paced each other almost, almost evenly. So the rehydrated water one was like at max, maybe about uh, two gravity points, like a head ever. So it really wasn't that much faster. It, it took a while. So I think if you're going to rehydrate your yeast, um, water is fine, but more importantly, using GoFirm or using something to add in to that beginning process will help the yeast move faster. Um, what I want to do now, because I think the taste test is also super important, I'm going to rack each one into a new container to get off of the sediment, and then I'm going to bring a friend over to come over and taste test them. We're going to see if there's any taste difference between the three. Overall, my overarching opinion thus far in the video, when I make mead and I rehydrate my yeast, I will be using GoFirm. It moves faster. The yeast are definitely going to be healthier because they had more nutrients. It just help them out. Not, uh, not rehydrating them is clearly about the same as rehydrating in just water. So here we go. Let's go to the taste test. All right, here we are for the taste test. I have Tony here to help. Tony, thanks for showing up and tasting some mead. Um, we just explained to him the whole process, what happened here, and now we're gonna see if there's any difference in the tasting of each one. So on each glass, there's a number kind of correlating with the specific carboy. We know what is what here. This isn't a blind taste test, so we're just gonna taste test and see if we notice any difference. So let's do it. Um, let's start with number one. How about that? Ooh, this smells sweet. I, I've not taste tested these either. Just getting some noses on them. See if there's a difference. I don't really get a perceptible perceived. Well, so this one's the most different. You think? I think number one is. I feel like their noses are all the same to me. Like it might, this one might have a little more sweetness, but I, I, it's also it, it's, what I started with. I'm like really splitting hairs here. I don't know that there's any nose difference. You know what it is? It's alcohol is more prevalent here. That's what sweetness. Is. That's what the sweetness you're smelling. Well, that's the sprinkled one. So that means that, which by the way, they the sprinkled and uh, rehydrated water were pretty much tracing each other. But that's interesting that sprinkled has more sweetness on the nose. It just it, you can smell the alcohol a little bit more. Yeah. The, the alcohol might even be the same. I don't know, but. Yeah, theoretically they're, they're the same ABV, but that doesn't mean that they don't have the same perceived. The, per the perception yeah. is of that is just, I mean, just a little bit. It's yeah. it's it's interesting. And I think that's what that sweetness is. But that makes that sense though, smelling. that the, the alcohol would be a little bit hotter since it's younger. Cause also, this one yeah. smells the most tame. Interesting. Number three, it smells the most like relaxed. Huh. That's an they all look- I say that and then I smell number two and it's like, I don't, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't really tell. It's like, they're so close. But number one definitely smells more, it smells more alcoholic. It may not be, but. Well, let's try it. Let's taste it. Ooh, that was way drier than the nose. Mm -hmm. You can catch the alcohol in the nose quite a bit mm -hmm. and on the back of the throat. Yeah, it's like overwhelming. It's like, yeah, it's really hot. There's a lot of bite, a lot of grip to this yeah. one. Not like, not tannic. It's not it's bad. Just, it's just, it didn't taste bad. It's just the alcohol is overwhelming. Uh huh. Which we're, I'm trying are to these think. traditional? Yeah, these are traditional. Uh, unsweetened. I've just kept them, not, or not, whatever, not back sweet, I should say, because I feel like that would have jaded the test a little bit. So, sure. We're only, for per perspective, we're like uh, 45 days old. Did you expect something to be different in any of these? I don't know. That's part of the test. Is, oh, is, you had no idea. No idea. Yeah, it's part of the part of the game. Uh, this one has some definite heat on the nose and on the palate. Yeah, it, and it like it catches you like on it, when you exhale, it catches you on the nose, and then when, it was like on the back of the throat. It's pretty. I don't want to make a comment about honey character yet because I don't know what the other ones. They might all be the same, but I have an idea about this one, honey wow. character. Yeah, it's so hot. It, it's not. It didn't taste bad. It's just. It's just overwhelming. Yeah. Let's go to number two then. See if there's any difference there. I don't smell the alcohol as much, but it feels the same. Yeah. And there's a weird like, you know, like butter popcorn, like after you eat like butter popcorn and then there's like that taste difference left in your mouth. 
Yeah. That's, I get that kind of like coating in your mouth with these for some reason. You have like a white thing. Like a white uh, yeah. or something. The color looks about the same, but number three, it's, it, it, I feel, and maybe it's just, maybe it's just where you drew it out, but it feels like it goes more clear, hazier, and then haziest. Look. Well, you think the most clear is? is number one. What? I feel like number two is the most. Maybe, and like I said, maybe it's where you drew out of the pipe pit. Yeah. Cause like, Look, look, I mean, if you look straight down, because these glasses aren't really. Yeah, that is weird. Because look at, I mean, look at mine. That's. This one looks darker to me. Just darker than number one. Yeah. In your. And these look the most similar. Huh. The, this is the outlier. Yeah. I feel, I feel like I haven't even tried this yet, but this number one feels like it's the most different, and I'm and I'm really splitting hairs here because they're they're very similar. Hmm. All right, so taste-wise though, do you notice any difference between these two, really. the, the one and two? Not even that's perceivable, I mean. No. I do, mm. I don't know if it's because I just had a moment to wait. I, I think there's a slight bit more honey forwardness or, or floralness to number two that I get. It's like real, it's just a, a little bit more floral, not like a massive amount. This one has more yeastiness to me as well. Number so, one. So, the finish on number one is longer. Mm -hmm. It's shorter in number two. It's really short. Number two is really short. Well, let's get to three then. Let's see if we can round this out. Yeah, I can still taste one. That's weird. I don't know that I enjoy the long, long, long tasting of number one as much. I mean, I, I like that. No, yeah, I mean, I like elements of it, but there's, like, the flavor to me is not like, it is not, I don't want the- The flavor itself isn't, it's not like, so good, and yeah, then, and then, and then yeah. you have this awesome finish or anything. It's just, it tastes okay, it doesn't taste bad, yeah. but it but it does have a long finish. Mm. Ooh, this one doesn't have as much, maybe I'm just, I, hope, I don't know, it could be alcohol palate. The alcohol stuff. is not as prevalent. Yeah. But it doesn't feel as, as hot. Uh-uh, no. That's really interesting. And the honey... It's more juicy. This one has a lot of, mm -hmm. like, the, the the body of it's way more juicy and less, like... But it does it's, dissipate real fast. It's a little bit richer. Mm -hmm. I mean, just a little bit. It's very slight. Interesting. And I think it's ever so slightly more complex. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. There's just a little bit more going on, and the honey comes through, I think, better. And this, then definitely number one. Yeah. I think this is the best one. Okay. Well, that's an interesting thing. I, I would agree, honestly, because there is number one, which is the sprinkle one, has some extra yeastiness to it. It has that long lasting finish, but the finish for me is not. It's the not, finish is long on this. Yeah. This one is just, I don't know, it's got some the heat is a little overwhelming. Mm -hmm. For sure, so that, that really detracts. This one, the heat is not as prevalent, but I don't know that it gets as, there was a slight floral character that I got from this that was nice, but it wasn't, it's, it's not as warming and juicy and appealing as this number three, which is. This is by far the best one. Hmm. It's the most balanced. Yeah. And um, is generally the most interesting. I, no, I agree, which contrary to what I um, I would promote to people because this one theoretically should be the healthiest fermentation, should have finished the fastest and done all the right things because it had its pre-workout essentially. Okay. This had the pre-workout, this had everything it needed to get prepared. This just falls apart. Yeah, it's weird. Maybe it's because it fermented quicker in some regards that it actually lost some of the nice characters. Like well, this they one, fermented all at the same temperature. Same temp, well yeah, little, the only difference is, um, was water, rehydration, mm -hmm. or go firm. Just the yeast. Yeah. Okay. The yeast is the same. Yeast, yeast, the yeast, yeast is the same. Yeast prep is gotcha. what it is. I understand, right, yeah. yeah. That's interesting, I would agree. This number three, no go firm rehydrated is actually the best. Now, I don't know if this is true of every single incident, and I still would promote people to consider adding some sort of pre-workout to your yeast to give them a, a fighting chance. Um, 
But you didn't do anything to this, right? No. No, this is as it was. I mean, I racked it off of, out of off the yeast that mm -hmm. was on when it was done. But yeah, it's it's interesting. I would agree. I would go number one, number two, number three. For reverse sure. order. Yeah, reverse order essentially. But yeah, well, that's this is fascinating. Um, I I do want to do this again. I probably won't do it on video, but I've enjoyed getting to to put this to the test. And now we know. I think you could maybe do this at a. Um, how, what temperature did you ferment these at? Mm, it's room temp 68, 69, somewhere in that. Depends on the yeast too. You know, sure. some yeast might need a hotter temp. Yeah, this room stays pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the best one. Well. Uh, there you I have it. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> that that's like what everyone wanted to hear, but that is the result of this test. I. Um, encourage you to still take care of your yeast and give them nutrients and do all the right things but that's the results if you want to go backwards the beginning of this video was the fermenting difference between them i don't know know that uh, fermentation time or speed is always i don't say good thing but just because it fermented fast doesn't mean that it's always better this one almost tastes like it's apple cidery mm -hmm. a little bit yeah yeah, no, I get that. Yeah, it tastes... It's got more fruitiness to it. I, I, I think this is more in line of what I think of when I think of a traditional bean. Yeah, weird. I don't, well, I don't know the science behind it. <laughs> I'm still figuring out the science too. So, Tony, thank you for coming on and doing this. Um, it's always good to have somebody on who uh, has lots of tasting experience. So, um, I'll be... You'll see Tony again in the future. He's, he's on lots of things with the channel nowadays. So... Thank you, Tony. Thanks. See you next time. Cheers.